Torrential rains causing floods and landslides to scorching heat waves taking a heavy toll. There can be no denying that extreme weather patterns are becoming more and more frequent, whether it is Canada or the United States or even Europe and China or India. Experts say that if we do not stop burning fossil fuels today, what we are experiencing now could become the new normal. July heat waves have brought record high temperatures across three continents and heavy rains have led to deadly flooding across the world. Experts say even a small increase to average temperatures makes a big difference. And this is because the whole distribution of daily temperatures shifts to warmer levels, making hotter days more likely and more extreme. Meteorologists predict that Europe could hit its highest ever temperature in the coming days with parts of Italy predicted to reach more than 48 degrees Celsius, while China has already breached its record with a searing 52.2 degrees Celsius in the remote town of San Boa on Sunday. Climate scientists say humans are causing extreme weather events to become worse. And in the United States, around 90 million people, which is at least 27% of the country's population, are expected to see dangerous levels of heat this week. The World Meteorological Organization has warned that there is no immediate respite in sight from this summer of extremes. They further added that the high temperatures around the world could continue into August. We have seen extraordinary heat and uh, we, in Europe and in, in the belt around the Northern Hemisphere, the peak heat wave season rises through January into August. So, and the planetary waves that lock in these systems that are developing these heat waves are quite difficult to, to dislocate. They are quite difficult to dislodge. So they're relatively stationary. So we should expect, or at least plan, for these extreme heat waves to continue through August. Although it's too early to say whether the ongoing July 2023 heat waves across parts of Europe, southwest US and China have been made significantly more likely by climate change, but experts say these types of events are consistent with what is expected in a warming world, particularly when combined with natural weather patterns like high pressure systems and El Nino. But it seems like heat waves are not ready to take a pause due to rising temperatures, a wildfire which has been raging on in the Greek island of Rhodes for five days has now forced hundreds of people to flee. As per authorities, at least 19,000 people have now been shifted in schools and indoor stadiums while firefighters continue to battle raging wildfires. While some regions are reeling under extreme heat crises, the Indian subcontinent continues to experience one of its worst monsoon seasons. In the national capital, New Delhi, River Yamuna is once again flowing above the danger mark as rivers continue to swell downstream from the Himalayas in the north. Civic authorities have now issued a flood warning in the NCR regions and have hinted possible evacuations. The Indian state of Himachal Pradesh remains con on high alert while heavy rains continue causing landslides, even causing the national highways to shut off. Parts of Leh in the Union Territory of Ladakh have also been struck with flash floods, damaging parts of the city. Water and silt hit the residential areas of the city, forcing people out of their houses. Due to incessant floods and four days after massive landslide buried a village in the Indian state of Maharashtra, the death toll in the region continues to climb. As per authorities, at least 27 residents have been reported dead and nearly 78 others are missing. And to show you how little time is left for the world to slow global warming, Brazil's most iconic monument, the Christ Redeemer statue, is illuminated to show the clock tick over from six years, showing the time left to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade. Sherry Goodman is a Secretary General of International Military Council for Climate and Security and also a Senior Strategist at the Center for Climate and Security. 
She is now joining us live from Massachusetts, United States. Sherry, good to have you with us on the program and welcome. Extreme temperatures have hit Europe this year as the world swelters through the El Nino weather pattern and also greenhouse gas emissions warm our climate. I guess the question now is, why is it so hot in Europe and more so in Greece and how long is it expected to last? Well, well, that's a question we all want to know the answer to. But we do know that climate shocks, climate extremes are now the new normal. Uh, the world has shifted because of the intense greenhouse gas emissions in our atmosphere. And now we live in a period that is completely different than the historical past, uh, where records are being shattered every day. We have had now 22 consecutive days in Phoenix. Uh, in the United in Arizona in the United States, where the temperature has been above 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and that is expected to continue. We have, as you noted, uh, a deadly heat dome over much of the Mediterranean and southern Europe, across the United States. In the southern United States, we have deadly heat. We've had Canadian wildfires um, that have been raging now for over a month sending toxic smoke and uh, air pollution down across much of the eastern seaboard, uh, including where I am in Massachusetts and throughout New York and Washington. Uh, so let's, you know, we have to be clear, this is a world we're going to have to adjust to. And the most important change that we've seen by many ways is what's happening in the oceans. So the temperature rise is one important measure, but marine heat, the rise in temperature in the oceans around Florida and the United States, it's now been over 90 degrees, temperatures around Ireland and the UK. So we, we talk, you know, 70% of the planet is oceans. And as that temperature consistently rises, uh, we are having, uh, we're going to experience more deadly effects, more sea ice retreat and melting. And the oceans really are the lungs of the planet. They provide us so much of our oxygen um, that this is really a critical moment for everyone to wake up and realize that we need to act. Sherry, there are so many people who are dying. Last summer's heat waves contributed to 61,000 deaths in Europe, and that's according to a recent study. The numbers for this season have not been accumulated yet. But how does one stay safe from the heat wave especially in Europe? Well, that, that is such a, a good question. I mean, obviously air conditioning uh, provides a solution, but it's not available to everyone. And of course, if you're running your air condition on fossil fuels, you're just contributing to the problem. So, you know, in the near term, uh, hydration, cooling, changing temperatures, limiting activity, these are all gonna be important both in Europe and on the Indian subcontinent and in the southwestern United States um, and learning to live with um, in certain areas, learning to live with less energy, more resilient solutions, smarter surfaces. For example, many of the ways we pave our roads and build our buildings just absorb more heat. But we can go to new technologies now and uh, India, U.S., Many other countries are now engines of those, that new technology. We need to be investing in those resilient solutions for energy, for heat, uh, for agriculture, in the way that we have invested in military technology. And there are, um, so there are important opportunities here. And I do look forward to seeing much of the engines of technology have come out of India on solar uh, and but there are other areas, too, in terms of climate technology. And one of the important areas is improving this predictive capability so that we can better manage to the climate extremes we're now living in, because we have near term weather, which tells us maybe next day or in a few days ahead. Then we have the long term climate models, and that tells us what we think the world's going to look like 50, 75 years from now. But we have to fill that one to 10 year gap, that one to 10 year gap in near-term climate prediction is where both science and technology is really going to focus in the future. And I'd say that is going to be a key opportunity in climate technology. 
Sherry, that's a very good point. Let's expound more on that. And I want your quick response to this one. Apart from the wildfires and the heat in Europe, there's the flooding and landslides in Asia, especially in India. What do governments in these countries need to do to avert a catastrophe in the future? Well, that's such a good question. Part, partly, they're going to need to have more emergency response capability of the type that... Um, you know, fire departments, flood managers have. And in many cases, we as we see in the U.S., they have to be, and in Europe, they have to be supported now also by our military because they have a lot of lift. They can do search and rescue. They can provide additional capability. But that's when the catastrophe has already happened. And we'll have to be prepared to have more of that emergency response capability resident at the local, regional, and national level. But that's just when the catastrophe happens. But we have to try to get a little bit ahead of the curve. That's why sort of flood control measures um, and improved predictive capability, all of these we need, all of these engines of both technology and preparedness, preparedness. We have to focus on being climate ready and climate prepared at every level of government in every region of the world. Right. I've been talking to Sherry Goodman, the Secretary General of International Military Council for Climate and Security, and also a senior strategist at the Center for Climate and Security. Sherry, thank you very much for talking to We On Wild Is One today. It was a pleasure to be with you, Eric. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.